Hi everyone, it's Diane with Sobatique and today is Fabric Friday. I have a little extra smile on my face today, plus I'm a little tired. But there's a very good reason. We have been unloading, unpacking, inventorying, and photographing so much new batik fabric. And it's multiple categories. Earlier this week, you saw an episode where I outlined and showcased our new 32 batik rayon fabrics. And that was just so much fun and I can't wait to dive in and make something out of these shades. They're just so gorgeous. The other thing, the other inventory is that yesterday we received a shipment of more Batik Rayon. So we have some replenishment of items that were out of stock. So if you have been, for example, waiting on the I'm looking over here because they have to be put away. They're stacked right in front of me here. But the um, hand-dyed dusty denim, we have back in stock our Violetta um, Valentine Pink, Phoenix. So many of the Phoenix motifs are back in stock. So Lagoon, uh, Malbec, Purple Magic. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of them. So take a look. You're gonna see that those are back in stock on our website as well as replenishment. If you are a bag maker, a handbag maker, or just love working with canvas batik, then we have restocked our um, original light to midweight batik canvas and supplemented that with new motifs and colors, as well as drum roll, our heavyweight eight ounce canvas, batik canvas is also here. I am so thrilled. We opened it yesterday. We had to like take off a wrapper of one of them just to see the weight of it, the feel of it. It is exactly what we want. And the colors are so rich and intense that I think you're just gonna absolutely love these fabrics. So some of the colors are new. Are new. Some of them you have seen in some of our other substrates, whether it be our cotton, or the ran or the jersey, we put them in the heavyweight canvas and tried to focus on fabric colors that we haven't put in canvas before. So you're going to see those. And so stay tuned for next Tuesday. I will do an episode. Maybe I can coax Bruce into coming along and showing these fabrics too, because none of this happens without Bruce. None of it. You may see me a lot on our episodes but Bruce is the guy who makes the designs and makes the colors and makes all of the batik happen. Um, so we have to have him on one of these episodes soon. Anyway, that's why I'm so excited. It has really been a fun week. It's been a busy week, actually busy two weeks, and we missed a Fabric Friday and I hate that, but I really, um, I just really have to get all of this stuff in our inventory and rocking and rolling for you guys. So that's why I'm so excited. Today I'm going to focus on woven jackets, simple, classic jackets made with our batik rayon. The first one that I'd like to share with you is the one I'm wearing today. This is a pattern that is not new, but it is a classic looking jacket. It is Lemon Squeeze Cardigan by Snapdragon Studios. And this pattern is, I don't, you're not going to be able to see how this looks. Well, yeah, I think you will. Let me step back. This jacket is a simple round collar, open front, no buttons, no zipper. You could add those if you'd like. Long sleeve bell opening. I just love this feature. I just think it's very, very stylish. The hem is asymmetric where it goes to a V point at your side seam, which is not hard to make. The back is long, shorter, of course, than your side seams. And the front again comes up and shorter than your side seams. So it's really a very stylish jacket. 
And I also think that what I like about this particular one, I've made a couple before, but this one, for some reason, the fabric just sings to me. It just really tells me that it is so stylish. It actually um, shows well, where I'm always worried about whether or not I'm uh, fitting properly. I really just love this jacket. This is our rayon. It is Garden East Divine as the motif. And the colorway is True Indigo. I made a size medium. Now remember, I am five foot seven and I wear normally a medium or a large. And the importance of this particular jacket, again, this one, if you want to have a nice fitted jacket, is going to be your bust measurements, which will control how this fits across your shoulder. And then it, it has it's fluid and it flows down from your bust. So I think for me, that is the only measurement that really mattered to me. And adjust everything accordingly. There's a very easy way to grade this pattern to fit your bust, waist, and hip measurement, okay? I do want you to know that the sleeve is very fitted. So I'm wearing a turtleneck. This is a ribbed turtleneck, just a basic white turtle. And it is snug here, okay? And I did make a medium. So my bust is a 39. The size measurement for a medium is a 39. And if you were going to wear something a little bit heavier, or bulkier like a white shirt, a classic white shirt with a collar, you would want to adjust your sleeve to be a larger size or go up on size in general, just so that you have a little bit of movement and that it's this doesn't feel too snug across your back. And it doesn't for me, I just feel like when I bend my sleeve, my, my arm, my sleeve tightens in the back here. So you might want to open up the seam just slightly to give yourself a little bit of room. But otherwise, this is just a simple, simple jacket with a facing and a simple, simple hem all the way around. I brought over two different interfacings. Now, normally when I'm working with rayon, I will use and recommend our Envy Silk fusible interfacing. It just adds that little bit of stability. And it is, this is the Envy Silk. It comes in a white and a black. And we have it on our website. And normally this is what I put in every one of our garment kits for Batik rayon. But I decided to change this on this particular garment because of, and I'm probably going to be too close here, but because of the collar here, this point does not stand up nice if it's not interfaced with a heavier interfacing. So I asked Kathy to put in a heavier cotton fusible interfacing into this jacket and it really made the difference. I don't like it when a simple collar like this without a button closure flops open and this does not. So I think this is that 9-0, I have to double check. I will let you know and I'll put it on the, <laughs> the uh, video down below, but I think it's a 906 and it is the heavier. And this is actually what I put in our kits for all the bag making kits when it calls for interfacing some of the, the cotton pockets um, or something like that. So it is a heavier interfacing. So that's what we're gonna include in our kits because I want you to make this so that you feel comfortable with it and that your jacket stays put. So always think about that too, even if you have a different pattern that you're working with, is think about that interfacing and the weight of that interfacing, because maybe it needs something a little bit more structured as well, okay? So if you were to wash your fabric, cut out your garment and sew it together, I always look at that as three nights and you have yourself a garment and 
you're going to just absolutely love this. Now, this pattern does take yardage because of the length. So it does say for all of the sizes from an extra small to an extra large, three and seven eighths yards of 45 inch wide fabric. I only include three and a half yards in our garment kit that's on our website because three and seven eighths is truly excessive. And you could, you could use the rest of that fabric for an infinity scarf if you're wearing a lower top underneath, if, you're having, if you wear a tank top with this, or a camisole underneath your jacket, you could definitely get a matching scarf to put on with this jacket as well. You're gonna have that kind of fabric left over. So I just really wanted to reduce the yardage so that we save on cost for your garment kit, okay? But this is just, you're gonna love it. I'm also gonna put up a picture. Kathy sewed this uh, version and she sent me a picture of the layout of how she laid this out on her cutting table. And so you can see each one of the pieces. One thing to think about with this jacket is the length. The length of the overall garment as well as the sleeve. I might consider shortening this about an inch when I make this jacket again. I do like the length of the jacket on me. And remember, I'm 5'7", so if you are shorter, it might be just too much and too overbearing for your figure. So think about shortening that. If you're taller than 5'7", this might just be perfect, or you might even wanna add a little bit of length to your garment as well. But just a simple, simple, stylish jacket. Um, you're gonna love this. And on our website, we do have garment kits, and I have switched out some of the fabric to be some of our new batik rayon and in fall shades and bright shades and some pastels as well because I think it's really elegant even if it's a holiday uh, in November, December, or January. Wearing lighter pastels I think are just so elegant um, as well. So take a look at the garment kit. Let me share with you the Fit for Art Tabula Raza jacket. And I really wanna show you this to give you some inspiration in working with more than one fabric in a jacket. I am always going and selecting one fabric, one pattern, and I make the garment, whether it be a jacket, a top, a pant, or whatever. And I think there are so many creative ways to use and incorporate more than one fabric in a jacket, and for, for today's topic anyway, a jacket. And so this garment is perfect for showcasing more than one. So the main fabric is our border batik called Downton Border in the colorway of Cope and Blue. So that makes up the front panel and the back panel. The sleeves and the side panel are our Violetta Cope and Blue. So the density of the motif that's stamped on the batik is more open here and very tiny on the sleeve. But the accents between the two are gorgeous. They just look so subtle and so beautiful together. Then we selected a lighter shade. This is the Dusty Topaz, which goes beautifully with Cope and Blue because of the, the color in the motif underneath has that shade of Copen. It's like the, the colors are reversed between the motif and the base color. And this is Lady May in to, uh, Dusty Topaz. So that really accents the front of this jacket. And I think I would really absolutely love to select three fabrics from our ever-expanding collection of Batik Rayon that really showcase this pattern. And if you've not worked with the Fit for Art uh, patterns, you need to do that. It's just really um, a wonderful way to build on the fit of a jacket. They have core, like four or five core patterns, and then they offer variations to the pattern. So you can switch, uh, you have your basic size that fits you, and then you can switch up the collars, the cuffs, the style of how 
um, each piece of it is put together. They just have a wonderful way of changing everything up, but the premise and the base structure and the core aspect of your jacket or tunic or pant is the same. So it's really quite fun to work with their projects. So think about ways that you can incorporate more than one fabric into your garments. I'm gonna jump over here and grab one more jacket that is the same same premise, okay? Where there's more than one fabric. This is the Simplicity 8172 pattern. And it is a simple kimono style jacket. Let me see if I can turn it here for you. And what we did, now I, I will say too that I'm thinking about this right now as I'm holding this. Some of these fabrics are no longer available. I am, the patterns are. And so that's what happens is we switch out some of the fabrics from time to time. And, um, but I just want you to see what you can do and we can always help you select one, two, three, or four different fabrics that work together to make your project. So this is the a kimono style top with a very beautiful flounce skirt base to this jacket and it's just simple to make again this is another one where you just simply finish the front the hem you stitch on you sew on your flounce to the top portion of this garment and you have this beautiful jacket and it's so figure flattering that's the thing that i like about this particular jacket the simplicity 8172 now this pattern has been out for quite some time. And I think you probably, if you don't have it in your stash, um, you can still get it as well. It's that popular. So definitely look for this. And at one point in time, we made this jacket also out of a border batik. So this is available as part of our garment kit as well, whether it be two fabrics that coordinate together. And you can make these as uh, complementary or contrasting as you want. These are just simply both twilight blue shades. This was the wisp motif and this was the pinpoint leaf motif. So a larger design and a tighter, uh, more, I don't know, just like subtle texture to the fabric that we selected for the flounce. Okay. This is a border fabric. So this jacket is the same exact jacket as Simplicity 8172, but what we did is we laid out the fabric so that the border was the flounce. So the border runs along one selvage edge, and then the hand dyed side is the top portion of this jacket. And so it almost looks like it's made out of just a single piece of fabric without a seam, and that was our goal is to use a border fabric to make a jacket with such, I don't know, I just love the, the drape and the fluid motion of this particular jacket. One thing to think about with this one though, is that you have to sort of know, I'm gonna hang this up for just a second, but you have to know where the flounce is going to land on your back. So I'm gonna turn this sideways. So wherever your, if you have a sway back, I do sort of, I have kind of that sway. And so you wanna make sure that it lands in the right spot. So that's the one thing about this pattern. It's simple to construct and it's simple to, to wear. It's just, we gotta make sure that that seam where the, the bodice hits the flounce is in the right place. Otherwise it will look absolutely wrong. So maybe do a tester on that if you want to, um, a muslin just to make sure everything is fitting properly or measure appropriately so that you know exactly where that's gonna hit you in the back as well. The next jacket we showcased a couple months ago and it's the shawl collar jacket, with, which is a McCall's pattern. I'm gonna grab the one that's over here and this was made out of our batik rayon and this is the cerulean colorway of the motif of flock together and this is also the same jacket this is a longer version we shortened this jacket to just show that 
everything doesn't have to be so long. So, so this is a shorter version of the jacket and it is a simple long sleeve, a front panel, a back panel, and then the collar is that shawl collar. So it's a longer neck that two pieces are joined in the back to give that really beautiful kind of a shawl look to the front. And that will drape down just slightly in the front. So another beautiful, simple jacket pattern. And this is the, let me grab the front of this, McCall's 8052. You know, I could go on and on and on about all the different jacket patterns that are out there. And um, just think of something that is classic, that is just your basic front sleeves and the length that you want. And any of these petite rayons will just be absolutely perfect for your holiday garments. <laughs> Remember earlier when I said that I really just didn't like this white turtleneck with this particular jacket? I think it looks nice, but it could be better. We could match this just a little bit better. And it's one thing that I really enjoy helping you all with is what fabrics go with each other. Because sometimes on the internet, I mean, it's very difficult sometimes to find coordinating fabrics. And the fabric that I selected for this jacket is, is really one of those. With the Gardenies Divine motif and the kind of a gray background to it, it's not a white, it's a gray. Um, I just said to myself, well, what do we have that works with this? And I finally walked around each one of our fabrics just to see what I could work with. And I realized that one of the fabrics that we have, which is hand dyed chrome, is perfect. And so if I were to put this, now disregard my neck, my neck, what do you think about that? I think the chrome will soften this up and not be so dramatic. So I'm going to make, actually I'm gonna make a tank top because I, I think with the long sleeves and the fit of the sleeve, I'm going to make the um, Santorini, <laughs> Santorini tank by Itch to Stitch. And this will be really beautiful because it has a really nice neckline. It's a simple tank with side buttons and a simple fit. And I just think that that will add a lot to this particular jacket. And then I can wear this with either like the jeans that I'm wearing right now or a nice pair of blue slacks to dress it up. Or even, you know, I could make a nice tea dress using the chrome and it would just be a gorgeous, gorgeous evening outfit. So lots of ideas, but I think that's what I'm going to make first is the Santorini tank. I'd like to answer a couple of customer questions real quick about our batik rayon and apologize for one. One was, what is the drape of your rayon? She is a new follower and watched our episode on Tuesday of the new fabrics that are behind me here. I never even opened up one of the bolts to show the drape of the fabric, and I really apologize for that. I can't believe that. I think I was so focused on making sure that I shared each one of the shades, I forgot to open one up. So from today, I am hoping that she has been following us on this episode as well. But to see the drape of the rayon made into various garments, including the jacket that I'm wearing. But it is a very drapey, fluid, flowing fabric. And it's a woven fabric, so there's no stretch to batik rayon. And it's just, it's a lovely fabric to work with. But it's not easy to work with the very first time. So if you are a quilter used to kind of a stiffer, heavier cotton, then this will feel a little bit different for you. And I decided I would talk a little bit about various notions that make sewing with batik rayon super simple and just little hints that will guide you along the way. The first thing is pre-wash your fabric using 
what we recommend, which is Synthropol. Synthropol is a soap. It's designed by Pro Chemical, and we have two different options on our website. They're both a four ounce bottle, because a four ounce bottle of Synthropol goes a long way. The two bottles, one is a regular, the original Synthropol, and the second is one that is low foam. Low foam is meant for washing machines that do not use a lot of water. So they're very water efficient. That can be a front loading machine, which is what I have at home, or it can be a top loading machine, but it's one of the newest efficiency machines that really truly doesn't use a lot of water. Um, I made the assumption one time that if I said the regular bottle is recommended for top load machines and the low foam for front load machines, that's really not right because we want to make sure that you're using the product based off the water that your machine uses. So if your machine uses a lot of water, uh, to function properly and to agitate properly and to clean properly, then use the regular bottle of Synthropol. So hopefully that helps. But um, always pre-wash. I do recommend warm water, wash with a cool rinse, and I do use an extra rinse cycle just to make sure that all of the Synthropol and all of the soap is removed from the wash. I do put my rayon in the dryer and I use a medium heat setting for just a couple of minutes. And I take it out before it's completely dry, hang it up so that I don't have to do so much pressing, but I always inevitably have to press my fabric before I lay out a pattern anyway. I just never wanna have a wrinkle on anything to distort the fabric. Because as you can see, it is drapey and the fabric will move on you on your table if um, you don't, either pin your pattern to it or use pattern weights. Those are the, I use pattern weights all the time just to put my pattern on my fabric and then I use a scissor. I have uh, lovely uh, cutting scissors, really sharp, super sharp scissors to cut out my rayon. I don't use a rotary cutter when I cut out my rayon. I do use scissors. So hopefully you have very sharp uh, I use Ginger scissors and that is worth every penny that they may cost you. <laughs> the needle that I recommend is the size of an 8012. There are a lot of manufacturers out there that make needles and use a either a universal needle or a top stitching needle that is an 8012. You can also use smaller needle sizes, like a 70, um, is it a 7011 and a 6010 or eight? That is fine. It's just harder to thread the needle because the needle size is, a, the opening is a little smaller. I have several of the 68s, 60 slash eight, and I do use, the, use those when I'm sewing with my rayon, but, 8012 is the perfect universal needle to have when you're working with rayon. I do use a Madeira serger thread and I use so fine thread by superior threads when I'm sewing my, my rayon. I like the weight of the 40 weight Madeira thread simply because it really secures the edges of my surged edge when I'm surging with it. I can, you can also use this in your sewing machine. It's not just serger thread, it's just titled serger thread. And I like the weight of the So Fine Superior polyester thread, which is 50 weight, which is a 50 weight. So it's a tinier, uh, smaller thread, or how do you describe that, thinner thread, and that, I think just really weaves in and out of the rayon beautifully and allows it to just, it almost hides itself if you have a perfect match to from your thread to your garment. If you want something bold and to stand out, use a heavier thread and that would be a smaller uh, thread number. So the smaller the number, the thicker the thread. When I pin my fabric pieces together, my garment pieces together, or if I'm pinning my pattern piece to my fabric when I'm cutting it out, I like a silk pin. And this is an extra fine 
pin. This happens to be from Magic Pins, but find a pin that glides, that just simply kind of works through your uh, rayon. And I just have always found that the silk pins from Mag Magic Pins, I have these all over the place at home and here, are perfect for uh, working with the rayon. If you work with a, a pin, like a patchwork pin, it's a thicker uh, pin, it just, it seems like it's just overwhelming for the rayon. Use that with your cotton and your canvas because you need a little bit more strength with that. But um, the extra fine silk pins are my recommendation. When I work with marking tools, I, I just typically grab what I have in front of me and I use a lot of different options. I can't state that there's one pencil uh, you know, fabric pencil that is better than another. There, I just think that there are uh, so many options. And again, this is one of these that's a personal preference. But one of my friends, Song, uh, introduced me to these Choco liner marking tools. And these are so great. Remember when years and years and years ago, I don't know if you still do this today, but I learned how to sew using tracing paper and a roller. And so you would put that down, you would put your pattern piece on top of it and wrap it around your fabric and you would use this roller to indent the, the uh, tracing paper ink or chalk onto your fabric. And um, I still have those at, at home and I think I've had them for 40 years. But these are in essence similar to that, <clears throat> only the chalk that's inside the roller replaces your sheet of paper. And it's just a great way to trace with a roller. The typical marking pencils or the Bowen lead pencil, each one has a little bit of an eraser on it so you can get rid of something if you've followed the wrong um, line on your pattern piece. So you just kind of have to pick up what's best for you, but each one of these works beautifully on the rayon. Even though the rayon will move on you a little bit because it's just, it it's it just moves. Um, you just have to kind of be careful about how you position your pattern piece down. I do use a ruler a lot. Maybe I'll I'll in the next one of my demos and so alongs, I will show you how I use a ruler and use the Chaco liner against the ruler to make my straight lines on my rayon, thus keeping the rayon down on your table so that nothing moves on you. Um, the only other tool that I recommend that I don't have up here, it's over on my cutting table, is the um, hot hammer, which is, I'll put a picture up here for you, but basically it is a hemming tool very thin, made out of a heavy kind of a fabric-y paper that can be pressed underneath your iron. And it guides you along the way to make sure that you are always pulling your fabric across and hemming at the same measurement. That's the only other tool that I really use when I'm making any garments out of our boutique rayon. So those are the tools that I think you, you definitely want to have something that is your favorite of those selections. Um, the other tool that I never really mention is the seam ripper <laughs> because we don't ever need to take anything out, right? <laughs> but we all have those and I think that's the only other thing. I gotta have a little humor now and again. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of our Fabric Friday where we talked about some really simple jackets to add to your fall and holiday wardrobe and shop our website. Look at the links below and definitely comment. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, what you'd like to see from our Fabric Friday episodes and our new It's Tuesday episodes where we talk about our new fabrics and new additions to our website. So enjoy your Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. This weekend, oh, this weekend, my sister's coming again. Darla is coming to help out around our place as well as, as mom has a whole bunch of stuff that she needs to have done. And so she's coming to visit for a few days, which will be super fun. So enjoy your weekend and we'll see you next week.
Until then, keep sewing, smiling, and sharing. <laughs>